Hey guys, what is up? John here from fly8mikealpha.com. In the hangar today, five minutes to explain our pedo static system on our Piper Cherokee. What is left of it anyways, this is all part of our what is inside of an airplane slash let's destroy an airplane video series. Let's get to it. So for starters, we are coming down here underneath our left wing. We have something relatively familiar to you. That is the pitot vein. We have the static port on the backside. We have the pitot inlet on the front side. That is basically your pitot tube if you're more of a Cessna person, but pitot veins is what we call them on Piper since they stick down like that. Coming up here, what it looks like inside the wing, we can see that we have these two tubes coming off of that pitot vein inside of our wing there, all right? Of course, one is pitot, one is static. Back one's static, front one's pitot. They transition from the rubber hose, that steel reinforced rubber hose, to our steel lines here. And we have these lines, they're actually aluminum lines. The metal lines come along our main spar here, following right through where our fuel tank used to be. That's where I'm standing right now. They fall along the main spar going inboard, and we can see as they come in here, they V off, and you wind up with pitot and static V off, following along behind this rib here, and then eventually going into the fuselage, going into the cockpit, right through where the forward wing attach point is. And we're going to go ahead and jump into our cockpit now and look at what that looks like from inside the cockpit. So this is our forward wing attach point right there. So that is where the wing attaches on. Right through here, we can see where we have our left brake line come through the side of the fuselage. And then we have these two rubber lines, those two steel reinforced rubber lines. Those again, pitot and static. They follow up here going through this little cross member there coming up and making their way up behind the panel. Let's go ahead and take a look behind the panel now and see where they flow to after that. All right, so nice seeing you guys here. There is no windscreen, obviously. This is the backside of our panel. So we can see where our pitot and static lines come up from the bottom there that we were just looking at. This is your pitot line right here. So this is for pitot. That flows right into the airspeed indicator, all right? So this is airspeed right here. We also have static pressure going into the airspeed indicator. Again, that static line flowing down all the way down past the firewall. So it first comes up the first instrument and actually hits as it comes along the sidewall just after the firewall. The first instrument it hits is actually our VSI. And then it flows over here through that T-fitting into our altimeter, lastly making its way up into our airspeed indicator, all right? So those are your pedostatic instruments, your VSI, your altimeter, your airspeed indicator. Of course, static touches all three. It is equal pressure because the line doesn't tee off or anything, it just literally flows from one instrument to the other. And then your pitot only comes into your airspeed indicator. Steph is now going to be an excellent demonstrator and go ahead and show you guys what happens as you blow some air pressure into the pitot vein and also suck a little bit on that stack board as if we were climbing an altitude. So if you would be so kind, Steph. All right, so through this frosted little instrument, Steph is now going to blow a little bit on that pitot vein. We're gonna see our airspeed indicator react there. And a little bit more, a little bit more. Oh, look at that. 140, oh, oh, 150, 100. Okay, that's, oh, V and E, that's too much, that's too much, that's too much. Okay, so now what's gonna happen if we go up in altitude? Well, we're gonna drop our pressure. That's gonna be the same as sucking on the static port a little bit. So now Steph is going to suck on that static port and we're gonna see, well, we're about 100 feet above sea level right now. Let's see what kind of high score we can get to here. Oh, oh boy, that was 2,000 feet a minute, oh no. Okay, gentle, gentle. So we're real gentle, gonna go ahead and suck on that static port. Oh, 1,000 foot a minute climb, wow. And we're up at 250 feet, AGL. Still climbing, 300 feet. Oh, don't let off too hard. Now also notice how your pedo, your airspeed indicator there is responding to that. That's interesting, right? So she's not blowing on the inlet for the pedo vein at all, just sucking on the static port. So you can see how that static port plays into that airspeed indicator. What you can see here is if you had a pitot tube blocked, the front inlet blocked, so if she blocks the front inlet of that pitot tube and then sucks on the static port, watch what happens to your airspeed indicator. All right, so this is what we're looking at here, guys. We've got our inlet there for our pitot coming in there. It travels up there to that little hose and then goes over to those metal lines here we've got our static on the bottom as well as that tiny little pinhole on the back. A lot of people will tell you, oh no, that little, uh, that hole in the bottom there, that's the drain hole for your pedo. And uh, yeah, that's just not correct. That's actually part of your static port there right on the bottom 
of this pitot vane, okay? So you've really got two static ports, this tiny little skinny one there on the back, the tiny little pinhole, and then this little guy right here on the bottom, the pressure differential between those two translates into your static line that runs up through the pitot vane, through that little rubber hose, and then into the metal lines that go to the cockpit. Here is just your pitot inlet. And of course, covering up one or covering up the other one and then blowing on the other side affects the airspeed quite a bit. Just sucking on here, sucking on those two holes back there is going to show you an increase in airspeed, show you a climb rate on your VSI and also show you an increase in altitude because you're dropping the pressure. If you blow on that, well then you're gonna show a descent, you're gonna show uh, lower altitude than you're previously at, you're gonna show negative airspeed if you're not blowing on there at all. Uh, bottom line is if you do blow on any of these things, be prepared to buy new instruments because they are incredibly sensitive, very light blowing or sucking will show you huge numbers on your airspeed, on your VSI, on your altimeter. Of course, these ones we don't care about so much so we can do that. Any airplane that you plan to keep and actually go fly, never ever blow on these, never try to blow on them to clear them out or make sure they're clear. Simply visually inspect them and if you think that there might be any bugs or any dirt or anything that might have worked its way up there or made something made a nest in there, go get a mechanic. They can very carefully with a piece of safety wire or something, take a look at it, but jamming a piece of safety wire up here into your very soft aluminum, scratching it, is probably going to make this not as accurate as it once was. All right, these are obviously uh, drilled out to a very specific width both on the backside here and on the bottom, scratching it, sticking stuff up there, trying to clean it, not the best idea. Hopefully that gives you a good idea of what your pitot stack system is made of. Remember all those different failure types you can get. If you go ahead and plug your pitot inlet, but the static remains clear, well, then your airspeed acts like an altimeter. And that has led to many accidents as people climb and they see, oh my gosh, I'm increasing airspeed. I need to pitch up more. And they just keep pitching and pitching until they stall. All right, if we plug up both of these, well, then everything's gonna freeze at whatever it was, your airspeed and your VSI and your altimeter will all freeze at what they were. The VSI, of course, will initially turn to zero. Uh, VSI always goes to zero unless there's a change of pressure here since there's a calibrated leak in that instrument inside the cockpit. And if we plug just the static port, but leave the pitot alone, well, your airspeed indicator will work kind of normally, but that won't be super accurate. And of course, your altimeter will be frozen and your VSI would be frozen. So that is our pitot static system. Any questions at all, you guys know what to do. Leave it in the comments right below on this video. If you guys have not already checked out all the other Cherokee video series here on Flight Mike Alpha, definitely do so. The link to the playlist is in the description below, as well as many more videos, 100 videos from this airplane or what is left of it on flyatmikealpha.com. Link is in the description below for that as well. Be sure you guys like and subscribe. That's that button right there if you have not already. And remember, if you cannot fly every day, then fly 8mikealpha.com. Check out all those awesome courses on there. Over 30 online courses on flyatmikealpha.com. Some free, some paid. Check it out right now. We'll see you guys in the next episode.